Hi everyone, today I would like to talk to you about multi-container development environments with Incas. Uh, this is the second part of the video uh, I created earlier, where we created a VM in Incas and connected it to Docker. You can watch it uh, before this if you want to learn more about Incas. I'll link it in the video description. So before we start, um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I typically create content around NeoVim, Kubernetes, Docker, Cloud Native, and all the geeky technical stuff. If you're a subscriber, thank you and welcome back. Um, if you like this video, please consider subscribing, giving it a like, uh, and definitely leave me a comment. I really like uh, reading comments and seeing what you guys are up to. So, what are containerized environments? If you uh, know projects like GitHub Code Spaces or an open source alternative uh, such as DevPod, for example, those things aim to give you a container and inside of a container package various tools, maybe language tool chains, so that you can open a local folder, typically in VS Code, and then you have all the stuff you need to develop a certain project. So that's kind of in a nutshell, what are those environments? And the main idea behind it is that you when you can take them with you, they are very portable, they are quite flexible uh, and uh, reusable, repeatable. So uh, they have all kinds of nice characteristics that you can take advantage of. So this idea that I have is similar with the difference that I am taking advantage of multiple containers. So we're kind of like setting up things that some of them are hybrid, some of them running Docker containers, some of them on running on different uh, virtualization so that we can have the best of, of both worlds and run our workloads in a more creative ways. It requires a little bit more setup up front, but the payoff is definitely increased flexibility. So let's look at the architecture we are going to build together. So in the center of all this is Incas. Um, a real quick reminder. Incas is a successor of project called LXD, and it provides various virtualization capabilities. The main workhorse in Incas is a so-called system container, which is somewhere in the between Docker container and fully fledged virtual machine. It shares your operating system kernel. Um, it only works with Linux, although they are now it's possible to run this in macOS using Colima and also in Windows using Windows Subsystem for Linux. So it's fully portable in this sense. System container has its own networking, a pretty robust security profile, and it just offers more in terms of, it's almost like a normal operating system, uh, but a little bit faster because it uh, shares your kernel. That's exactly what we want for our setup. So in the center of it, we have a container with NeoVim, of course. Wouldn't be my channel uh, if it would be NeoVim. So we have our own NeoVim experience. In this case, I used uh, Lazy uh, Vim, which is a distribution of NeoVim from Volker. And I added also a few other tools. We have SSH, we have Docker CLI, Z Shell, Tmax, a few aliases and other uh, quality of life improvements inside of the containers. This is our main workhorse where we are going to connect to and work from. Now, how we are getting to the files that we are working on is that we are mounting um, files from the local host. In my case, I am mounting the dev folder. You can mount your home directory or whatever you want. You can see on the top and the right a utility container. So this is just another container, system container in Incas uh, language that contains various utilities. So it might be uh, things, for example, like Pandoc for text manipulation. Maybe you want to have a very versatile and robust performance testing container or so on. So it's not exactly a Docker container. It doesn't have just one application or one process. It has multiple kind of specialized tools that you bundle together in a dedicated setup. So those are those utility containers. However, 
we can also use Docker since we have a Docker CLI and we can connect to our host Docker uh, system and we can run anything that Docker offers. So we can run a single applications, web servers or whatever we want. So this gives us enough flexibility to connect to various containers from inside of our main workspace container and then execute various tasks. So that's the idea. Before we start, however, I want to emphasize that it's important to set up a robust security profile if you're going to expose your Docker host on the network, which is exactly what I'm doing. I have a Docker running locally, and then I am exposing this Docker on the network, and uh, I am using um, uncomplicated firewall and adding a rule that my Docker port can only be accessed from the new containers IP. So if you're using different tool, you have to look up how to set up those rules, but also quite simple to do. And you have um, peace of mind that you narrow down the security constraints here. A few more ideas how you can use uh, satellite containers around your main workspace container. As I mentioned earlier, utilities, those can be, of course, um, things like Pandoc, for example, or networking tools or anything else you need, something that groups together various tooling. They can be language specific containers. Maybe you want to have a Rust, a lang uh, Rust tool chain or Go or Python or whatever. Finally, you also can have a database or other infrastructure containers that you can connect to. A project called Test Containers is a good example of it. Or maybe having a robust testing suite with performance testing tooling or others. Those are just various ideas uh, what other containers you might need alongside your main NeoVim development container. All right, so with this out of the way, let's switch to a demo. And let's build together uh, the NeoVim based setup and all the things we've mentioned. So here you can see I have just an Ubuntu VM running, which is the VM that we talked about in previous video. And now we are going to set up a NeoVim dev container and other things. So the way I'm doing it typically in such projects, I'm adding just file. If you don't know what just file is, it's really like make or like make file, but it focuses on orchestrating commands rather than on building anything. I've created a video about just file. You should see it somewhere above now, and I'll link it in the video description as well. So if I type just, you can see that there are various recipes, similarly like in make file. I have things like create dev container, copy keys, and others. So that's my main way of interacting with our whole setup. So let's see how the just file looks like. Just file, and you can see this is our main recipe that is really the core of the whole setup. We are creating a dev container. So it, all those are incus commands, and we are using incus to initiate this container, and we are taking a Ubuntu 22.04, and here the cloud means that this is a cloud init compatible image. Cloud init is a mechanism that allows us to initialize and install and configure various things in our VM or in our case system container when it first boots. So that's exactly what we are doing. We are passing this nvim config.yaml and let's see what it is. You can see it's kind of like a really easy YAML here. We are updating packages, upgrading, installing a bunch of stuff, and then executing various commands. This can be really anything that can run Bash. What is interesting here, we are installing NVim and we are executing Lazy. So Lazy Vim, a distribution of NeoVim uh, that we can run in our system container out of the box. So let's go back uh, to our just file. All right, so those are the things we set up and configure. As I mentioned earlier, we are adding a 
third disk, which in my case is in this location. It's all my development projects. Then I'm setting up other um, various configurations that are required for everything to run. We are starting the container and we are also um, uploading the simplified Z shell and Tmax configuration. At the end, as I mentioned also, we are using uncomplicated firewall configuration to make sure that we are deleting and adding a new rule that only allows communication from our container. All right, so with this out of the way, let's actually kick it off. So we can do just and tap for completion and maybe create dev container. So when we hit it, you can see that now all those commands that we've seen earlier will be executed in sequence. We are going to end up with a new Vim development container with other things. In the meantime, let's look at other recipes that are here. So you can see we can also copy SSH keys. Uh, earlier I mentioned that this is the way how we communicate between containers. So our main NeoVim container follows a hub and spoke architecture, and this is a hub in our case, and we have spoke other containers that we can connect to using SSH. So those containers are created using this recipe, which allows, you, allows us to create a helper container. And you can see that it has a little different SSH configuration or cloud init configuration that we can use. All right. So here we have our container up and running. Let's create um, a helper container. So we can say create a helper container. We'll give it a name helper. This should be much faster because we are not installing all the things like NeoVim and all other uh, all other projects, but we are rather just configuring internally SSH so our containers can accept SSH connections and we can utilize it. This is done. And now we want to copy the SSH keys from our dev container into our a new utility container so we can connect to them. So let's do this. Just copy SSH keys to helper container. So this is done. And now we should be able to SSH inside, not to SSH, but to use Incos exec to get inside of our container and see what's there. So let's check it out. I have a recipe for that. Just start Z shell, which actually uses Incos exec under the hood to get inside. So you can see we have a different prompt. We are inside of the dev container as a root user. And uh, I promised we have a new Vim, so let's check it out. There it is. We have lazy Vim uh, running here. It finishes some three-seater installation, and we can just use it to create anything or to work on the mounted uh, folders and files that from our local host. But what I want to show you instead, I want to show you how we can uh, SSH into the helper container. So here we are back into the prompt, and you can just say SSH helper. It asks us whether we want to accept the connection. We say yes, and you can see the prompt change. We are currently in the helper container that we have created uh, a moment ago. So you can imagine this container maybe having some additional utility tools that we require, and all of those containers have access to the underlying mount uh, that contains my all projects. So that's handy. Let's exit this for now. And what else can we do with it? So we have uh, seen how to create the utility container, which is another uh, Inco system container, but we can also use here a Docker container. So we have this Docker create utility container, and this creates a Docker host container. So Docker runs on my host, but I am actually able to connect to it from the container. So it's a little bit of a reverse network here. Uh, and um, all the code, including this just file, I will share with you. It's in different repository. 
I'll link it in the video description, but also some of what we've done is in the first video uh, from the series that I created earlier. So let's actually create this Docker utility. So just Docker. And this is just a container called tools. And it's simply a busy box and a container, which has all kinds of Swiss army knife tools of Linux. So since we created this repository, this Docker container, we can actually start our Z shell one more time. And I can show you that we can see Docker PS right here. And if I go back to my machine, so this prompt in the bottom is my machine, and Docker PS, I can see the same output as I see at the bottom here. So this is quite nice. And now I can access all the containers running on my local host. So we can, for example, do Docker exec IT, and we can say uh, tools tools and then maybe something like shell i can see again that the prompt changed same principle as earlier we are not using ssh in this case but we are using docker exec and if there are tools that we want to use here we can do this as well we can also just uh, maybe it's a web server we just launched or something else so we can use other docker commands to communicate with this container but this gives us the flexibility we need to do it in this way so let's exit this again and uh, now our setup is complete uh, we can use it to develop anything we want uh, we can quickly uh, add new software and uh, add new services to our container we can take a snapshot we can save it so now we have containerized successfully our NeoVim uh, application. One thing I want to show you is you can see here I have Tmax. Uh, I've created a video about Tmax if you're interested. I'll link it as well in the video description. But our container also has Tmax. So let's open a new Alacrity session. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And then I can also say again start C shell. Now we are back into our main development container and I can simply type Tmax and you can see this is a slightly different uh, a prompt than we have here at the bottom. Let me bring it back. This is our normal Tmax prompt that has a CPU, GPU and RAM. However, this one is a different one that is dedicated for the container itself. So we are inside of dev container. We have some date, time. CPU utilization and so on. But otherwise, those are the same shortcuts that I'm familiar with. And I can create windows, change between them, and I can, can have a dedicated session uh, running inside of my container and use my Tmax setup I'm familiar with. So that's all the things uh, I wanted to show you. Um, thank you as always for your time. Thank you for watching. Um, let me know in the comments uh, whether this is something that uh, you think you could use. As I mentioned, I will share the whole setup and scripts for this uh, once you install in because it's quite easy to set up and you can have your own multi-container development environment up and running in no time. All right. Thank you, everyone, and see you in the next video.